It's really strange to me that science is in the act of flinging open the curtains on a staggering vision of what it is to be alive in this cosmos. I mean, we now can look back through the Hubble and other telescopes, you know, 13 billion years to within 600 million years of the primary explosion that presumptively created this universe. Meanwhile, we're tearing open the, nat the nature of the human genome, the nature of the heart of the atom. Uh, this is the great, great age for the expansion of the, of the scientific vision. But the population is somehow incapable of staying up with what's going on. And so we have the greatest proliferation of occultism in all forms since the 16th century. It's almost as though there is a bifurcation of the culture. The, the scientific, the makers of new science are going deeper and deeper in the direction that the rest of the public not only cannot follow them into, but is actually headed the other way. And uh, it's, a, it's a condemnation of our educational system that people have not understood that science, for all its flaws, is the only tool for understanding the nature of reality that has any kind of track record whatsoever. The others just have a story to tell. You know, the Buddha story, the Jesus story, fine stories, but that's all they have is a rap. Uh, the, the amazing, th you see, why is science different? Somebody could just say, well, but isn't it just a rap? Well, it's, it, it's, it's, it is, but it plays by slightly different rules than these other explanatory systems. Science is the only explanatory system where you get points for proving you're wrong. You know? I mean, you form a hypothesis, you publish a paper, then you do further experiments. You discover your conclusions in paper A were completely wrong. You retract paper A and issue paper B, and your fellow scientists say, this guy does very good work. These are careful thinkers. You can bank on these people. They're not flaky. What religion operates like that? Uh, you know, can you imagine coming out of the ashram and saying, having the guru say to his students, well, we managed to reduce that hypothesis to rubble in morning re meditation, didn't we? So, you know, it, it's, uh, uh, I, and then let me return to answer that question based on my original misunderstanding of it. <laughs> and I would say this, you cannot, it is no reduction of the psychedelic experience to say that it is caused by drugs because they are material atomic systems and therefore we know all about them. Every electron is the yawning mouth of a wormhole that leads to quadrillions of higher dimensional universes that are completely beyond rational apprehension. Matter is not lacking in magic. Matter is magic. I mean, so when you hear these people like David Dennett and all these talk show materialists running around, these people haven't gotten the news that's coming out of quantum physics. I mean, you see, there's a, there's a, pr a problem, or let me describe to you the state of play here. <laughs> the way science works is, is science uh, respects fidelity of theory to experimental results. What really thrills a scientist is when you have a theory that makes a prediction down to five or six decimal points, 
and then you perform an experiment and it's spot on down to five or six decimal points and then everybody involved in what's going on has extremely high confidence that they're on the right track. Well now only one science is ever that good. Physics, macrophysics, uh, by uh, chemistry, it's good, but it's not that good. Uh, ecology, biology, demography, these are pretty loose. They play with numbers, but it's to high, it's a fig leaf. And by the time you get to <laughs> sociology or something like that, I mean, these clowns have just snuck under the tent and should actually be shown the door. Uh, and, and put back outside with the card readers. So, <laughs> so for several hundred years, uh, you know, to, since let's say Galileo and serious physics, this is how it, science has been. It's been a pyramid of envy directed toward the paradigmatic science, which was physics, and which could produce this incredible congruence of theory and, uh, and experimental data. Well, so then physics, of course, charges forward deeper into matter, asking deeper questions. Well, once you pass below the level of the electron, it's, it's like suddenly, it's like smoking DMT or something. <laughs> Absolute madness breaks out, where before you had these wonderful theories and they were feeding back this data. Now suddenly you have backward flowing time, you have particles which, ton which appear magically on one side of an energy barrier without apparently crossing through it. Uh, you have non-locality, which seems to imply that every particle that exists is somehow magically connected with every other particle. We now have quantum teleportation, we have black holes, we have singularities. And don't be fooled, folks, what is a singularity? It's just a place where you agree that the rules are canceled because you don't know what the hell else to do. <laughs> and it, it's fine, you know. It used to be in physics that they had one singularity. It was called the Big Bang. And so you say, well, one singularity, essentially what science is saying is give us one free miracle and then <laughs> we, can, we can run it from there. <laughs> but, uh, the, the theory of special relativity then introduced the concept of black holes and of course uh, black holes are enormous gravitational masses so massive that neither light nor information can leave them and what do black holes have at the center of them? Well, a singularity. <laughs> well, how many black holes are there in the universe? 10 high 14, that's a lot of singularities if you're trying to produce a theory without singularities. I mean, essentially, that's an admission of total intellectual defeat. My God, if there are 10 high 14 singularities, you're not even doing science. You just might as well be, you know, channeling uh, Atlantis or something. <laughs> so, um, it, it, it troubles me because I think this stuff is rich, uh, that physics is feeding back and that ultimately a model of consciousness will come out of studying the, the deeper levels of the behavior of matter. But the conclusions are all going to support the non-scientific, non-rational factions. In other words, Bell non-locality is real. All matter in the universe is in contact with all other matter through some kind of higher space based on their original connectivity. Quantum teleportation is a possibility. Uh, these violations, backward flowing time and violations of, of rational casuistry are all real. In other words, science, meaning physics at this point, prosecuted its agenda of deconstructing nature 
to the point where it let loose the elves of madness, paradox, contradiction, and peculiarity. And that can now never be put back. I mean, the dirty little secret is that at bedrock, the universe is more like a DMT flash than it is like an 18th century garden party, as we were previously assured by the practitioners of science. Uh, so I think that's enough ranting on that subject. <laughs>